Escape by my colleague David, and welcome to Plane TV. Today on Plane TV, we're going to be talking about Sonar Wall. Sonar Wall is a web linting tool, and its goal is to help developers write better code uh, for the web. The overall goal, of course, is to create a better web in general for everyone. Uh, it's a collaborative tool, uh, open source, and uh, it's owned by the JS Foundation. Uh, so maybe David, you can uh, talk a little bit more about SonarWall, and maybe go over anything I might have missed in the sure. introduction. <laughs> okay, so SonarWall is uh, meant to be an easy tool to use and also to uh, collaborate. So we don't we don't want to reinvent the wheel, or SonarWall doesn't want to reinvent the wheel. So if there is already a good tool that the community agree that is a good tool, we can insert in SonarWall in an easy way and start and allow users to, to enjoy it. Okay, nice, nice. So, you know, you mentioned, uh, I guess, some of these tools that you've integrated in there. Maybe you can show us uh, some of the back side of this and run uh, Sonar and show us the architecture that actually is behind this tool running. Sure. So, first of all, we should install SonarWall, okay? So, for install it, it's just SonarWall npm install SonarWall G if you want to install globally. Okay. Okay. Our recommendation is use it, uh, add it to your project okay. as a dev dependency. But for this in this case, for us, it's better globally. Okay. So I already have, have it installed, so I'm not going to run it because it take a little bit. Sure. So we can go directly to run SonarWall. We just want to run SonarWall on our site. Okay. And, and you've created a simple website for us to, to yeah, check this Yeah, I have against. just a, a small and simple website with this. It's just a test page and a script. Okay, okay. perfect. Link to escape. Okay, uh, so now we can run it. And after a few seconds, okay, we see that uh, it's going to use a default configuration because we don't have any configuration right now, we can go and explain that bef uh, after after I explain a little bit more, okay? okay. Sure. For now. As you see, SonarWall is doing things and now it's finishing. Okay. So we are almost ready to see some results. Okay. okay. Oh, so, okay, go. here it is. We can see that, for example, my website doesn't have a good compression, doesn't have a Good certificate. Uh, yeah, it's a little bit. Lots of room for improvement. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I need to improve it. Yeah. Uh, okay. Nice. So I see you got the rules. These are our results. Uh, maybe you can explain how those rules and results, you know, came to be, how that tool ran, and what was happening while we were waiting there for a second. Okay. Sure. We can explain all of that. So, oh, sorry. This image is too big. So this is uh, the architecture, okay? The big picture of SonarWall. Okay. Uh, what we did was like run SonarWall uh, and the URL, okay? Yep. Using the CLI. So the CLI now is going to call SonarWall and then SonarWall is going to return the result yep. and the, the CLI will show the result, sure. okay? Using uh, what we call a formatter. Okay. Okay. So then SonarWall, how it's work is, first of all, Mm, we need a browser to run the website, mm -hmm. okay? So and do, download all the resources and everything. Sure. So that's the that's what the connector does, okay? Yep. The connector just open a browser, run the website, mm -hmm. and collect the information. Okay. Then we have two more components: the parsers and the rules. Mm -hmm. The parsers. The only thing is that once the collector has some information. The, uh, the parser get a notification and can transform some uh, some information. Okay, so okay, it's, it's transforming that yeah, information. Yeah, it's just a transform, a transform, a transformer. Yeah, yeah <laughs> nice. Okay, and then uh, the last thing we, we have are the rules. Sure. Okay, the rules are the one in charge to analyze your website. Okay, nice. Okay, the connector just send information and the rules are the one that say, okay, this information is good or not. Okay. Or you need to improve this thing or, or not. 
Okay, so I see all this. I understand the structure and the architecture here and what's going on. How flexible is this uh, to my needs? If I wanted to change something in the uh, parsers or the rules or connectors, how flexible is this? Well, it's really flexible. So we can show an example. Okay, okay in this case, we, we were running the default configuration. Mm -hmm. So it's something that we cannot mod modify. The default configuration is a standard, but uh, what we are doing is, uh, what we can do now is configure it. So we are going to my GitHub folder. Here I have a file that is called, well, we cannot see it because it's, so it's sonarwall RC, okay? okay? This file is the configuration file. Okay. So I already have it open in here. Okay, yeah. nice. And this is the current configuration. Okay, we can run Sonarwall with this configuration right now just to see that the result is similar. So Sonarwall, um, okay. Yes. But we can take a look uh, to the Excel main, main while this is running. So as we told before, we have a connector. Yep. Okay. For matters. Okay. Parsers mm -hmm. and rules. Okay. Okay. Some other options, but for now we have the components we saw in the in the architecture. So the connector in this case is Chrome. So as you can see before, was a an Chrome uh, window was open yep. automatically. Uh, then we have the formatters. In this case, is the summary and Excel. Mm -hmm. So we have we will have here uh, the resort okay. in a summary, and um, if we do add, yeah, we can see that we have here a Excel file. Okay. Okay. So what well, if we see we we take a look to our result? We say that okay, I have problems with the meta chart set. Um, rule, I have problem with the content type, but I can say, okay, for in this case, uh, I don't care about the SRI. Okay. So okay. for some reason, I don't know why, but I don't need it. So okay. we can remove it. It's like, we can go to the SRI and remove it. Also we can say, Hey, okay, but, uh, no friendly error page for me is not a warning. It's something very important. So I'm going to, uh, I need an error, not okay. a warning. Okay, okay, so we can go to uh, no friend the error page and change to error. Okay, nice. Okay. What if I, uh, you know, have external links? You know, we collaborate a lot on websites, and so a lot of times there's components on my website that another team is fully in control of that I I don't want to know if that's failing because I'm not going to have any ability to to affect that part of the code or that component on my website. Is there a way to ignore those external yeah. elements? Sure. We can we can take a, uh, do an example a little bit later because uh, right now if you see the result you cannot see any res I mean it's like okay I have an error in the X content type but where okay. or I have an error in, in the HTML checker but which file or the compression which file is not compressed okay. so we can also change the formatter okay and change and use the stylish okay. So if we run Sonarwall now, so the Sonarwall is running. It's yeah. opening that new config file. Yeah, it's downloading the, all the resource and traversing the HTML. So now we see that the errors has changed a little bit. Yeah, I got resource. some more info there. Okay, so now it's okay in localhost. I have all those errors in my JavaScript, I have also few errors and in my fairy control. Okay. So asking your question is like, okay, I don't have control about tracking JS. This is an external resource, so I cannot modify anything and I don't want to see the errors all the time. Sure. Right. So we can uh, ignore that, that URL. Mm -hmm. Okay. So how we do that is I uh, have a, a snippet here. So basically there is a property called ignore URLs. Okay. So I just need to change for the example. And it's like, okay, I, everything that comes from example.com, I don't want to check it because it's not my website. So I don't, 
It's not that I don't care, but I cannot do anything about it. About it. Sure. So yeah, and in this case, is like everything that comes from uh, example.com, but we can change for. I mean, we can personalize for whatever we want. Okay. okay just just a file, the whole de domain, whatever. And also, we have an asterisk in rules, so it's like okay, I don't want to apply any rule to that uh, to that URL. Okay. Nice. If you want to. I mean, it's like, okay, I want to run everything, but not the compression. So you can add here the compression. Okay, nice, yeah. nice. So now if we save the changes and we run the, let me check that everything is okay. Don't change. Yeah, it's look like, so. All right. So we're gonna run it again and hopefully not see those error messages about that. Yeah. <laughs> right. There's the window opening the connector yeah don't loading anything and the everything. same process and same. now you don't see the errors for that file oh very nice you just very see nice. the H, the local host and the fabricon dot like perfect perfect awesome yeah so it's the in this way you can configure almost everything okay ah, also you can see that the your rule no friendly error or your error uh, sorry the no friendly error rule is giving an error and not a warning Nice. as we configure in the in the file nice so super configurable uh, yep. open source community driven uh, you know anything else I'm not I'm not hitting on for this tool well just mention that there is a website where you can find everything it's just sonarworld.com okay you have if you have any question about how what is uh, checking any rule or how you can, in some cases, also how you can configure your server mm -hmm. and everything. You can go to the website, to the documentation, and here you have rules and okay, everything. Wow. Why a why a rule is important? Why what is checking that rule? Okay. And how you, can you configure? For example, in this rule, we can see that you just you don't have just error warning or off sure or you can remove it also you can configure the rule and say okay i want to show only errors now. okay so that's depending on, on the rule okay but you can find here uh, everything the one of the goals for sonar wall is have a good documentation okay so also if someone if someone take a look to the website and see that something is not uh, correct or want to collaborate and everything because remember it's an open source project is part of the uh, JS Foundation so you can go to to github is github.com sonarwall okay and don't worry we'll be putting these links on the site for everyone oh, watching here no, it's not this one because this is not sonar no. okay okay so you can see the this is the repository, so if you have any issue, you can come here and open a new issue, or if you want to collaborate, you can open a pull request and collaborate. Okay, perfect. So uh, awesome documentation, awesome support, including uh, you being in there. I know you jump in those GitHubs and actually answer those questions and pull requests yeah. and stuff. Uh, I think that gives a pretty good overview of Sonar Wall, uh, the linting tool that is a JS project. And, uh, you know, thank you so much, David, for walking us through and giving thank us you. a quick uh, overview of SonarWall. Super cool tool. I can't wait to use it. Uh, for anyone that's following us, uh, be sure to check out the details below. We'll be putting links to everything related to SonarWall. And stay tuned to our next episode. We'll be looking at creating custom rules for SonarWall. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.